Hello everyone. Hello. This is Leon and Simon from the Nice Game Shop. Uh, wait a second. Uh, yeah, Nice Game Shop, Nice Game Hub, Nice Game Publishing. Uh, that's us. So, and uh, last month, so in May, we were uh, on a trip to East Asia and um, we visited some conventions there. So in Tokyo, we visited the game market, in Kaohsiung in Taiwan, the Moonlight Board Game Festival, and also in Korea, Seoul, the um, Board Game Festa. And we brought back a lot of games. Mainly Leon brought back a lot of games, uh, more than 30 games. And today he will introduce them all to me and you in yes. less than 30 minutes. In less than three minutes was our last try, but it didn't work out. So we'll try to do it in less than 30 minutes now. Yes. So let's get going. So this is um, Beluga um, by I Can't Live By Myself. It's from uh, Japan. What is the name? Beluga. The, the name of the company? Uh, I Can't Live By Myself. Hmm. Very poetic. Um, so this is Beluga. Uh, the the game theme is also poetic. It's about it's a cooperative game, and we are uh, helping a Beluga whale mother uh, finding her daughter. So two to four players. There was just the the English rules uh, um, released just now, so you can uh, download them on Board Game Geek. This is Beluga, and it's uh, it's in our nice game shop. Another game, which is a nice game shop, is uh, Here Comes the Dog by Itin. Um, I just <laughs> show you the components because Itin games are known for their beautiful components. So you have this bonfire, uh, and you're placing a lot of uh, those popsicle sticks uh, around the bonfire, and it's a dice game. You take uh, the um, the sticks and you're trying to tame dogs. Depending on what you have, like uh, meat, you can tame the dogs. Sometimes the uh, dogs get angry, then you have to fight them off with fire. I'm not sure if this is really uh, visible. You can show the back of the box, maybe. But obviously, Itchen is the company that made uh, Tokyo Highway, and yeah. they've uh, made another game with uh, incredible components. Yeah, they definitely uh, know how to make a, a game look attractive. So maybe you can. Uh, look like this. So this is here comes the dog. It's also on nice game shop right now. Um, then we have Kamakura Collection by Do Game Studio, which is also on nice game shop. Um, in this game, for uh, how many players? Two to four, yeah. Uh, it's a game for two to four players in which we are um, doing sightseeing basically in the town of Kamakura, which is in the south of Japan. So we are trying to uh, see all the sites, getting tokens for that, and then we score them at the end of the game. Uh, beautiful components, um, as always, from Ju Game. That's Kamakura Collection by Ju Game Studio in Nice Game Shop. Mm. Let's continue with a beautiful game uh, called Monster Empire, which is, I think, one of the biggest games we have in our uh, shop. It's uh, by the Japanese company Freaky Design. Um, I remember we showed um, pictures of the prototypes very early on where they had these uh, branded wood style components. Yeah. Uh, right. They have been converted into these um, standees, cardboard standees, which are still beautiful, I would say. Still very beautiful. So I'm really looking forward to trying this as well. I've heard it's a laughing semi-cooperative kind of game. Yeah, yeah, uh, right. Uh, actually, so you have a board and um, uh, on spaces on the board are these monsters, so six different monsters. And if it's your turn, 
you're describing three features of a monster you want to fight, but you can lie. You only have to uh, tell one uh, feature truthfully, the other uh, two features could be a lie. And then everyone at the same time decides which monster they want to go to. And if it's the same as the player whose turn it is, uh, they will fight um, cooperatively um, the monster by dice battling and also some card playing. And uh, yeah, it's... Um, yeah, and since since you share the loot, you want uh, exactly. just as much help as you need, but not more. So that's why you would lie. Right, right. Yes. Yeah, sounds fun. Important point. Yeah, that's uh, Monster Empire, which is um, also a nice game shop right now. Yeah. I'm going to have to get one of those before they are gone. Then there is a game maybe you can tell us a little bit about. Um... I can tell you a little bit about this one. This is uh, Solorius by Beagle Games. Um, it's a um, push your luck game about dating in Seoul uh, with some very nice um, uh, Korean webtoon style graphics. Uh, and basically what you're doing is you're, you're, you're drawing cards, uh, trying to uh, make points by certain set collection conditions without collecting too many of these um, broken hearts. Um, yeah, that's Solorius by Beagle Games, uh, up and coming Korean um, studio. Unfortunately, we only have two of those, so uh, it's not currently available in the shop. Mm. But we'll maybe try it on camera sometime and yeah. Actually, I think they were assembling these at the fair, so I'm not sure how many they even made. Um, which is a very common thing, yeah. actually, yes. um, in these fairs. Uh, and another one that was assembled uh, specifically for me is, no, the other one uh, is uh, why we are uh, at the board game festa is Fire in the Hole uh, by Yi Zhu Hua. Uh, so he was basically loading these uh, for every individual customer. Oops. And it's a cooperative uh, flicking game, uh, which, is very cool. which is very cool. A semi, actually, it's a, a with, with hidden identity. So um, what you are doing is, I don't know where they are. Uh, what you are doing is you are flicking little discs. Uh -huh. Here are some discs. Uh, and uh, you are flicking little discs into a target area and uh, you actually have a hidden traitor. So um, one of uh, us will be flicking uh, with hidden motives and we should try to find uh, him out if we want to win or he should try to sabotage uh, the attempt okay. yeah and also the packaging for this game i have to say is really it's a little bit like a grenade fire in the hole fire in the hole now i took a long time for my two games uh, i know but um it's gonna be uh, deduced uh, from deducted from your Tokyo game market time, so okay, maybe you should I'll, you should continue. I'll for do now. Uh, two at once. So we were at the Monster mm. Empire before. These are also from the same company called Freaky Design. This is Shinobi Empire with Ninja, and this is um, what's the name? Chikotaku Debris. Um, mm -hmm. So I haven't played uh, played them, but uh, as far as I know, they are. Quite similar. Um, both are card games, and you basically have uh, cards with different colored shinobis or different colored aliens and Shikotaku debris, uh, debris in your hand, and you play them in a common uh, display. And uh, according to some rules, you will score your cards, so your color, because every player has one color. Um, how it exactly worked, I don't know yet, but this is the basic basic idea to play um, those beautiful illustrated cards in the different colors 
um, into a common display. Looks very cool. This wow. is this is the front side. They also have a front side which is quite beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I just showed the back side <laughs> before. <Okay. laughs> yeah, um, this is, uh, Shinobi Empire and uh, Shiku Taku Debris by so Freaky see, Design. Yeah, also different colored char characters as the ninja on the Shinobi Empire on one card. Is this available? In this is not shop? available yet on Nice Game Shop. This we have just those two copies um, because we were so impressed, or I was so impressed with Monster Empire. I picked up their previous games, um, Shinobi Empire and Shikudak um, uh, Debris as well. Cool. Yeah. What's next? What's next? A game we will have in the shop like this week or uh, yeah, end of this week. Uh, it's uh, called. Mochiju uh, from Homo Sapiens Lab, which is a um, free for all fighting game for three to six players. It's very easy. You draw two cards from a deck and you keep one for yourself and give the other one to the player on your left. Then uh, everybody is revealing all the cards at the same time. And then, according to some rules, <laughs> we will um, ba basically. The strongest player will fight the weakest player, if I cor uh, remember correctly. And uh, so the cards have different like special actions and so on on, uh, on it. And yeah, it's, it's a very easy uh, 5 to 10 minutes uh, free for all fighting game. Mochi Ju. It will be on the shop um, soon. Then mm, that one looks intriguing. That one looks intriguing, uh, but I really don't know anything about it. Uh, I bought two games from this company. This is one of them, Witch Hunter, and another one I can tell a little bit more about it. Um, so those two I picked up at the Moonlight Board Game Festival. Um, it's from a. Um, I don't know if it's. It's from a. Um, Mainland China company, so not not Taiwanese company. Um, uh, Joy Pie. Um, okay. Uh, this one says made in Taiwan. Taiwan. Okay, this one says Shanghai. Maybe they are from different companies. Maybe actually, this one, both of them are Fantasia. Okay, uh, so it's a, it's, so a, it's a Taiwanese company, but I, I I didn't before my visit to Moonlight Board Game Festival. I didn't know about Fantasia. Maybe uh, this is a co cooperation because this one is just Fantasia, and this one so is Joy. include Joy Pie. Joy Pie and Joy so. Pie is a company based in Shanghai. Anyways, so Witch Hunter <laughs> is uh, designed by Shifan uh, Chen, which. Um, uh, who also designed games like um, Design Town and uh, uh, Design Town, which is also called Flip City, which is also called um, Flip City, and also um, uh, Harvest uh, something? Harvest Island. Mm. And is what's the name of the mm. dice games, which were uh, Berry Farmer? Mm. So. Um, it's a game for th three to nine players, so it's kind of uh, um, a social deduction game. But I haven't played it, and I have not re uh, re uh, read the rules. So, so the feature is uh, Witch Hunter is a brand new team game. You would not know your own identity at the beginning of the game, but other players would know who you really are. So I guess that's the. Um, a uh, special thing about Witch Hunter, it's a hidden identity game where your own identity is hidden from you. Sounds cool. Sounds really cool. So maybe we can try this out. Um, not now. Not now. <laughs> but some someday. Sometime. When yeah. we have seven players in <laughs> the uh, in the uh, in the headquarters. Yeah. And this is another um, uh, game which accommodates uh, up to eight players, uh, but it's also playable with three. Um, this is called Come on, bite me. Um, also by Fantasia, by or Joypie and Joypie. Um, this is a party card game, which is very simple, but 
great. Uh, the thing is, so everybody has one card secret, uh, which has a number on it and an animal. Animal is just for flavor. And then you say, uh, I want to challenge you. So, and we both show our cards secretly. So I give you my card, you give me your card, and we look at it. And whoever has the higher number wins and takes the lower number as a trophy in front of themselves. And that, then the turn goes to the next player. And uh, we can also um, uh, siege another player, as it's called in the in the rulebook. Uh, sieges, I can ask other players to cooperate, uh, cooperate with me to defeat uh, one player. And then the player with the low, if we win, the player with the lowest number will get uh, the defeated player card um, as a trophy. Very interesting. Now we can play. We can already play. Yeah, we can already play. Yeah. It's it's that sim simple, um, but it's it's a, a, such a simple idea. But it's it's great. It's a great. So you played it. Game. You yeah. played it, and it yeah. was fun. And it's uh, available. It's not available yet mm. on on Nice Game Shop, but actually, I I want it to be available on Nice Game Shop. So that's uh, come on, bite me by Joy Pie and Fantasia. Very cool. Let's move on. Let's move on. Um, now a game which is oh. available on Nice Game Shop. That's um, Dice White Shot. Uh, people on Board Game Geek will already know uh, know this game because of the um, kissing rabbits. Because of the kissing rabbits. It's actually a roll and write game. So you roll dice, and everyone has a play uh, tableau, and you are just um, and with dry erase markers, you mark what you wrote on the uh, player board. By March Hair Games. <laughs> yeah, it's by March Hair Games. Um, yeah, so if you're into roll and write games uh, or Stanley Kubrick, then this may be your game. Actually, uh, oh. oh, I thought there is a, there is a Stanley Kubrick um, quote on the box but it's actually Benjamin Franklin keep your eyes wide open before marriage and half shut afterwards yeah the other and me both are married so we can see the wisdom I think and probably our wives as well <laughs> the wisdom in these worlds but it's it's uh, dedicated to Kubrick so as you can tell from the box anyways so that's dice white shot which is um, on the shop right now Yeah, let's let's oh 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 oh, oh. well okay. This one, my turn again. Yeah, this is uh, Dragon Class by Yeon Min Jong, who is uh, kind of famous for Patchy Story that was released a few uh, years ago, and this is uh, very nicely illustrated, in my opinion. Um, kind of hand building game um, basically uh, what you are doing is by certain rules um, collecting different skills that are important for dragons like the tail whip or flying and uh, then you have a, um, a scoring where uh, that will be um, evaluated uh, it, I've not actually played it yet. I'd really like to play it uh, here uh, sometime. So maybe we'll. Uh, that will be one of the games that we will introduce um, more closely, more uh, in more detail in a separate video. Okay. And uh, for now, um, take a look at these very beautiful illustrations by Hami, um, who I also had the pleasure to meet. Look at uh, this. The dragon is biting at the graphic design bar on this side. Oh, I didn't even see that. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's <laughs> hilarious. Um, yeah, that's uh, Dragon Class by uh, 1979 Games and Yeon Min Jung. Yep. Okay. Um, let's move on to two mm -hmm. games from... Mozart games in a very interesting um, packaging. 
So it you comes open this one. Yeah, I opened oh. this one already. Uh, uh, wrong side. So um, it comes with do-it-yourself um, box boxes, so you can assemble them by yourself. Um, they are not inside yet, but they were given to me. Uh, this is Hound. I have uh, no clue what it's about. The publisher said actually, uh, if you don't like, know Chinese, it's very difficult to play. Um, but that's the game. And then uh, we have also Sheepdog, which I played, um, which is a two-player um, kind of deduction game. One player is the uh, wolf trying to eat all the sheep, and the other player is the uh, sheepdog trying to um, defend the sheep and uh, um, yeah, get rid of the, the wolf. That's um, Sheepdog by Mozu Games. These dogs are cute. They are not in the shop uh, right now, but maybe they will be um, after Essen, I think. Mm. Then oh. we have... What is this? Yeah, this is Cinecita uh, 1937, which is... Um, from Tokyo Game Market. It's an older game, so it's not a new re release from this year. Is it um, including this yeah. envelope? It's including this envelope, wow. and it's including uh, these folders. Oh. And I really like games with envelopes, <laughs> for some reason. There's a lot of money inside, so... The, um, the game is a drafting game in which you try to make the perfect movie, but in order to make the perfect movie, movie you need to have good people uh, uh, on your set. So you need script writers and actors, of course, and the producer, um, and so on. I just and want you to take a closer look at the money here, and uh, <laughs> the portrait in the middle of the money, which... <laughs> So basically what you're doing is um, uh, drafting so you and fixed auction at the same time. So you're putting in this folder one of your cards and uh, money. So, and then you give that to the player on your uh, left. And the player no now has two choices. Either he takes the cards and can play that uh, card in uh, his turn or he can um, uh, take the money. So if he takes the card he has to pay the money I just put in the folder or he takes the money and gives me the card back then I can play the card. It's a little bit like uh, Barracuda, right? A little bit. I... Like in Barracuda you uh, offer someone money and for a card and either he takes the money and gives you the card or he has to give you the, the same amount of money that you would have okay. given. Okay, it's a long, it's, yeah, it's long it's, time ago anyway. that I played Barracuda, but yeah, uh, maybe. The, the, um, <coughs> this is one part and then you have to play also your card here in, a, in, in your um, scoring area. So you have basically two different areas. One is the uh, studio and one is the office and in the studio there can be only three cards uh, and in the office there can be as many cards as you like and every time you play a card it first moves into the into the studio and then uh, if there are already three cards one card moves down into the office so you have to time your cards right because uh, the numbers on the cards um, basically tell you uh, how um, the quality of the movie in the studio. So you want very high uh, number cards in your studio to have a quality movie, but then depending on what you have in the office, uh, it uh, determines what the box office success will be, because a quality movie is not enough. You need also the marketing team to uh, sell your movie rights, so uh, and then uh, this two combined will be your final score. So there's a elaborate uh, scoring going on at the end of the game, but everything with these very cool um, 
folders and drafting, which is uh, it sounds easy. really cool. And it's all language independent, and there is an English rule included. But can you actually buy this in Nice Game Shop? <laughs> Not yet. Mm. <laughs> Not yet. No, we have only this copy. Uh, this is another game, actually. Uh, I would like to uh, get for for nice game shop because I really enjoy this a lot. Um, that's Cinecitta 1937. Um, let's move on to a game you can actually buy on nice game shop. So we are not teasing here. Uh, this is Zombie Crisis by Manifest Destiny and uh, Kuro, which is a two-player cooperative game uh, but asymmetric so one player is um, the soldier in the zombie crisis and the other player is the scout and the scout knows which zombies are approaching and the soldier has the cards and the weapons to um, defend the base from the zombies so the, it's a limited uh, communications game so uh, the scout cannot just give all the information about which zombies are approaching. Um, so, yeah, you have to get um, in sync with the other player to, to know where which zombies will come and play the right weapons there. So it's another um, asymmetric cooperative two-player game from Manifest Destiny. Uh, and they are also the guys behind, or he is the guy behind uh, Ravens of Three. Sahashri, yes. uh, which um, is nowadays available by Osprey Games and was a, quite a big hit, I think, in Essen a few years ago. So I'm very interested in actually trying this because that other game was quite good. Yeah, so this is Zombie Crisis uh, in the shop right now um, with English on the cards, um, Zombie Crisis. Then Let's move on to Der Tunnel, Escape from East Berlin, a um, game from uh, the recent game market. It's uh, also, uh, also a two-player game, but it's a two-player competitive game and um, like a deduction game. Uh, one player plays the leader of a group of people who wants to escape East Berlin uh, to West Berlin. So they're building a tunnel, Der Tunnel. And uh, the other player plays the um, uh, secret police and tries to stop them and imprison the, the group of people in order to win the game. Uh, I think the, the theme is interesting. I mean, I don't know how many players would feel comfortable uh, with playing the secret police. I don't know if it Maybe this theme would be better uh, fitted for a cooperative game, but uh, in game markets, no theme uh, is too people people too play people play Nazis in Axis and Allies, and so I, I think it's it's fine. It's a game. It's a game. Right. It's just it's, it's, a game. it's just a game. That's right. So and it's it's a good one. So um, you play your tokens down and your cards down. For, um, depending on what, what uh, which side you are on <coughs> and you reveal all at the same time if the uh, cards and tokens match the security uh, will um, catch you and imprison you if not uh, you can dig the tunnel and go one step closer to freedom um, and the, the trick is now that uh, the security the, the, the secret police has to discard uh, their cards at the end of the turn and only get them back at the start of the uh, next round. So, no, uh, at the start of the next, next round. The, mm. How do you call it? So, they don't have the cards available a later for one round. I would a, say. A later round. <laughs> so, they don't have their cards available for one full round, which means if you see the, these cards at the discard as the freedom player, you can play your um, people um, safely. Um, yeah, we'll have to play it to <laughs> understand it. Their tunnel escape yeah, from I, East Berlin. I made a. Uh, I've written a more detailed uh, description on the Nice Game Hub. So even more detailed. 
<laughs> That's uh, the tunnel by uh, Figbe. Not on the shop currently. Then we have oh. Cinderella Magic. And new Colonel game. New Colonel game and the expansion. Uh, Cinderella Magic is a, a deduction game um, for three to seven players. So what you're doing is you have a um, hand of cards and in your turn you can play a card either face down or face up. If you place it face down, nothing happens. If you place it face up, uh, there is an effect on the card and you can do it. So uh, in, a, in a turn, a player can announce, I want to go to the ball or let's go to the ball. And then other players can decide if they want to join. So in order to go to the ball successfully, Cinderella needs uh, six different items, five different items. So we are flipping all the cards that were played um, in the rounds. And if all the five different items are present, we can go successfully to the ball and the players who announce they want to go to the ball get a point. Uh, if the items are not present, the players who didn't go to the ball at that point um, will get the point. So, yeah, you have to deduce, uh, you know how, how often each uh, item is in the game, so you can deduce uh, from the cards that were played openly um, and also through the special actions um, which cards were already played and if it's already time to go to the ball. Another nice looking little card game by Colon Arc um, and it also includes that little expansion. Yeah, it's not uh, included, but, no, uh, but you, you can, can buy it. You can buy uh, the little expansion extra, which is um, um, adding three new cards to the game. The Witch, Rattles and the Glass Slippers. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I really like uh, those small card games by Colon Arc and um, I hope many people will buy this new one as well. Cinderella Magic by Kenichi Tanabe and Piki. Um, this is on the shop uh, also, which is called Galaxy Wrestling Federation. Uh, no, it's not so yet it's on the a shop. It's name but for a shop. Sorry. Let, let me try that again. So, uh, this is Galaxy Wrestling Federation um, by Homo Sapiens Lab. Um, it's also a free for all um, brawling, brawling game, game like the Mochichu. Um, so, everyone has a, a deck of cards and plays a different wrestler, oh. but they are all mechanically, they are all the same. I mean, they have a nice artwork of different. Westers like this brute guy here, or um, this Kisulo turtle, turtle Westler, <laughs> <laughs> and so on. Um, so basically, you're um, announcing that you want to fight another player in your turn, and then you say either high or low, and that means either high or low wins. Um, so you play the card face down, reveal simultaneously, and if you have the higher or the lower card, you will win. Except um, every card has always um, such a uh, so it has one big number and one sm small number in in the corner, which means this card will always defeat this number. Um, and then uh, yeah, we we check uh, who uh, which player won. The battle and uh, the defeated player has to discard the card and they ch they've just played and the other player gets uh, a point mm. and that is uh, galaxy wrestling federation which will be on the shop very soon maybe even today maybe even today um Oh, what is this? <laughs> These are three games. I will show us one um, in uh, one take. This is uh, Take Care of Polar Bears 
Can You Hear Me and Jeunesse, Jeunesse Farm. Farm. So these are three games by Vision Works, and I actually found them at the UK Games Expo, which was happening uh, last weekend. Um, but they are from Korea. But they are from Korea, from a Korean uh, company called Vision Works, and this game even won uh, a prize or two prizes. Uh, good serious game and good game price and um, and this one is a brain wellness game and this one uh, was game of the month as um, our colleague Tyler told me um, so together with Topito so um, these three games are kind of uh, serious games so they, they um, right in their manuals that they are that these are like educational games uh, they're trying to um, uh, include important topics like this one for example empathy this is polar bears polar bears and the taking care of polar bears melting of, of uh, uh, the ice on the North Pole and this one is uh, probably about brain wellness this is about brain wellness so um, we have we will not have them in the shop um, but maybe we will try them maybe sometime. we will try them sometime yeah uh, so they are all uh, beautifully uh, produced and uh, another publisher I did not hear of before but uh, oh, yeah they have three beautiful games Vision, Vision works, works from Korea from Korea South Korea This is um, a genius mm. forger goes to New York, which is of course a spoof of a fake artist goes to New York, uh, which was published by Oink Games um, a few years ago. Um, a genius forger to New York is a different game, but uh, takes one of. Uh, it's also a drawing, a party drawing game for three to eight players. Thing is here, uh, only one player knows what to draw. Knows. Uh, Mm. a thing he has to draw and the other player uh, tried to copy him so um, it sounds very interesting I really like the reference uh, to the on game and I'm anxious to try this one as well that's a genius forger goes to New York speaking of oink games Oh, there were two uh, actually one new oink game at the uh, Tokyo game market this uh, is it money bags, um, which is as you can see, spoiler, uh, nearly twice as thick as um, this one is not cl really close though. Yeah. But yeah. Anyway, it's very and uh, why is that big? It's because of uh, game. a lot of a lot beautiful of metal coins. Yeah. Let me touch those. Uh, so basically, you are trying to steal coins from other. Exactly. Bags. So every player has a bag and some coins, and in your turn, you uh, steal coins from another player, or you close the bag. So if you close the bag, you're just out of the round, and uh, um, you score at the end of the round. So, um, but if you steal. Uh, what will happen is you grab into the bag, steal some coins, and take it, uh, put it in your bag, and then the players, uh, the player uh, who was just stolen from, can say, um, "I want to challenge you." And uh, then we show all the coins from the bag, and we compare them. And if now the the thief has a higher um, coin stack than the guy who was just uh, stolen from then um, this guy the guy who just got stolen the from victim. the victim thanks that's a better word for it will get all the coins from the other player and the wow. game so uh, you're, goes not on. you're not supposed to steal from people who have less money than you exactly listen and to that rich people of the world 
Yeah, so it's also a serious. Yeah. It's also yeah, it a serious an educational game, game. Um, by Oink Games. And, and then, unfortunately, yeah, you'll probably not be able to buy it. We really tried to get more um, copies of the game. Um, we already got a bunch, but they sold out so quickly. So we really tried to get more, but it looks like we'll not be able to get more. Have yeah. we given up? Not uh, yet, not fully, but not don't fully, count on it. But it's, uh, I mean, maybe down the line there will be uh, um, a regular edition. A regular edition, maybe mm. without the uh, um, metal coins, maybe with with cardboard, or I don't know. Um, but this edition, it's, it's you can only steal it from us. But yeah. if you try to steal it from us and we find out you have more money than we have, then we will get all your stuff. Which will be probably the case. So. Yeah, m most likely you will lose all your money. So don't don't try it. Don't try to steal from us. So yeah, that's that's uh, money bags by by Oink Games. Um, they had this game and they had also another game. Which uh, were not, uh, which was not released at uh, Tokyo Game Market, but Osaka Game Market, which which was just one month before. So this is Zogen, or Zogen, um, by Oink Games and uh, two German authors, Christoph Kanzler and Anja Wrede. Christoph Kanzler is uh, the author of Barracuda, by the way. Um, so this is a. a Speed action card game. Uh, you have a hand of 18 cards, I believe, or 16 cards. And there's one card revealed at the start of the game, and you play a card. Uh, you can play a card which is one icon different from what is just revealed. So basically, these cards have all the um, all the different like bacterias on them. So let's say these four bacterias uh, are on the card just revealed, so I can only play a card which has one more than that or one less. And I have to announce um, which is added or subtracted. Um, I can, but I can lie. So that's uh, the trick of the game. I can ju just play any card and lie about it, and if nobody is checking, um, I can uh, go with it. So yeah, that's Zogen, speed uh, action card game for two to six players by Oink Games. Probably which is... takes longer to explain than to play. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, this is in the shop. Oh, another game you currently cannot buy anymore. Yeah, but I, I will uh, try to get this soon back in, in stock. This is uh, Pastelli by Analog Lunchbox, which is just beautiful to look at. Um, you have this very thick, beautiful tiles. Oh, very thick. Yeah. And you have this board, and you place the tiles here, and you have also some um, player markers, which you place on these uh, spaces uh, around here. So it's a two to uh, three player game. So, and what you are trying to do is you're trying to make a connection between your uh, two of your playing uh, player pieces. So you have four total, so you can make a uh, total of two connections. Um, in a turn, you can either place uh, a tile or uh, move your player piece. Um, and then at the end of the turn, it's a, it is checked uh, through how many tiles your connection is going. So this can escalate rather quickly. So now in the, in the, in, at the start, it's quite easy. So you have only a couple of tiles uh, on there. But uh, tiles can, of course, uh, be placed on the ground level, but also placed on top of each other. And depending on through how many tiles and uh, so through how many tiles your connection is going, you will score, which is getting brain burny uh, quite easily, as you can imagine. But so they've included a, they've included a, 
a clock, right? A sand timer. No, there's no oh. sand timer, uh, but it's um, it's like well in Japanese, but uh, this is the extra rule, as it is saying. So, uh, and it's saying uh, for a more exciting game, try to play with a one minute timer. So just mm. set your smartphone on one minute and give every player only one minute uh, because otherwise turns can be quickly also can be not not very quick can quick, be not quickly quick. not very quick yes <laughs> but in any case it was a huge hit on the game market and also in our shop uh, so uh, we'll definitely try to get more copies yes um, and sell them to you past tally and they also released another game, Coffee House, which I don't have here right now, but we are uh, also sold out on this game, um, and we are trying to get more copies of um, that as well. So, mm. um, then we have another huge hit um, of Tokyo Game Market, which is called Hikto Rune, um, which is a very unusual uh, cooperative dexterity game. So you have this, um, like, Held, Let or? me try this once more. Uh, like this. And you have a stack of cards vertically. And like this. And yes, you can maybe see or hear. They have like a um, special finish on the cards which makes them um, sticking together more easily. And so what you're doing in your turn, you're taking as many cards uh, from the stack without letting the stack uh, collapse. And then, so there are um, different elements on the card, like the blue element and the red element and so on. And you are oh no. basically needing uh, your need you need this uh, different elements to solve quests. You're placing the elements then uh, on the different quests, and if you have all the elements there which are needed, you solve the quest. And in the end, you try to uh, defeat Whoa, the, the, the mighty dragon. So maybe I can show also. Yeah. But you did I great. Did. I did great. Did great. Can you take from the middle? Is that allowed? I just want to show you, uh, for example, for this quest here, you need two reds and one uh, of any color. Uh, that's a good question. If you can, uh, I think if you can manage to pull out from the middle, then. Mm. Anyway, not? these cards are very nice and interesting to touch. But unfortunately, you cannot touch them. Yeah, it's not in the shop. But it's another game we really would like to have on the shop. It's just, there are so many games releasing at Game Market and... Uh, we cannot we... always get all of them. Yes. Unfortunately. But we try. We try. Which is why we have no money. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't steal from us. So anyway... <laughs> this is Hiktorun by Koguma... Hiktorun. Kubo. Kubo. Kuguma Kubo. <laughs> anyway, so this is um, Run Animals Run by Taiwanese publisher Teenage Riot and Homo Sapiens Lab. Um, a very depressing game. Very depressing game, yes. It's about uh, endangered... Unhappy, unhappy endangered animals fleeing from the zoo. Well, of, from, no, 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 fleeing no, from, from civilization, yeah. right? It's called That's, Zoo of Depression, yeah. but there's actually no zoo. So you, uh, each player plays one of these endangered species of animals in, in Taiwan. And you basically struggle to not, ex not get extinct, not yeah. get extinct in, um, in a world which is uh, getting urbanized more and more each day so you start the game like this you, uh, maybe you can tell from uh, the game board it's all green but so start the game like this um laid out the, the different tiles but uh, we uh, roll the dice each uh, turn and then if this number is rolled the 14 
we have to flip the tile to this side, which is not looking so nice anymore, which is now their, their like, uh, like the construction, construction workers and... and so on. And you can also see the, the cubes on there. These are the resources I can gather from that tile. So if it's flipped to the urbanized side, I, I can gather less resources, but I need those resources to basically stay alive. So uh, the, the theme is very strong in this game because I'm starting the uh, game with maybe three meeples of my species and I, I have cards to play. But if I want to cycle through my cards to get my discard uh, back to my hand, I have to remove one meeple from the ball, from the game. Um, and I, uh, I cannot get it back. Um, and I can only cycle through my hands without losing a meeple if I manage to uh, uh, solve a, a, an objective, which is basically getting some, some resource cubes and um, yeah, solving and the objective. That's the game, but also this box includes, as I just found out, this really cool poster. Yeah. And additional information, I assume, about endangered animals. Yeah. Uh, so, right. another serious game. Another serious way. game, yeah. I mean, wow, yeah, that is sad. So, to, this, this is Run Animals Run. Um, it's not available on the shop yet, but we will hopefully have some copies soon. Run Animals Run by Homo Sapiens Lab and Teenage Rights. So, because we had now a lot of serious games, let's continue with a lighter, lighter game. Katain by Crab Games. So, this is basically Settlers of Catan plus Poop. And surprisingly, it's not made by Colon Arc. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's not made by Colin Arc, but by Crap Games, and so in this game uh, you roll for resources, like you also do in um, in Settlers of Catan, but the different resources are different type of food, so meat, vegetables, and so on, and then you convert the, uh, this food into poop. So, for example, for a normal poop, I need two meat or two vegetables or one meat and two, uh, one vegetable. And for a long poop, I need meat, vegetables, uh, fruit and milk to make a long poop, which is two poops uh, together. And I can also make a hard poop, which is uh, uh, for what I need a, a lot of resources. So, and you're placing... We rapidly... I have them here. Ah, yeah, I have, I have them, them here. here. Yeah. Uh, you're placing uh, your poop on uh, colon. this uh, colon uh, board and you're trying to reach the exit and I think there's a kind of uh, this is longest road uh, mechanic uh, that you uh, use to that you use to find the winner yeah exactly so this is uh, longest the, road the anus <laughs> And you try to um, connect your poop to the anus, but if uh, somebody rolls uh, like a um, three of a kind, uh, three, three of the same number, then uh, they can move the uh, the anus to another place. So maybe the the poop you just placed uh, is not connected to the anus anymore, uh, and you cannot score at the end of the round. Okay, I think that's. Basically enough. Before we get censored by YouTube or something, <laughs> uh, this is enough about Katain. Unfortunately, not available in the shop. I think it was yeah. limited copies and yeah. quite quite pop popular. Yeah. So. so this will be hard, I think, to get. They hmm. only have like a very limited copies. Um, and as it often is the case with the indie publishers at uh, game market, they only uh, they only print a few copies maybe just 100 or 200 and if it's gone it's gone so uh, i i cannot guarantee that we will have this this game on the shop but this is katain katain by crap, crap games right
This is a game we have on the shop, and it's called Stock Hold'em by Hisashi Hayashi and Ukazo Brand, which is combining stock market, a stock market game with Texas uh, Hold'em hold um, poker. poker. So what you're doing is you're um, investing in all these different companies or are you buying shares from all these different companies for example the squid um, paint company and so on and you're uh, doing that by placing information cards on the companies um, and then pay them and the, uh, the, the, the cards you play um, are evaluated at the end of the round and according to poker rules and the the stock market price uh, raises or, or falls. Um, so, for example, if you have like a um, uh, three three of the same numbers or uh, full, uh, street a street, also on all the different poker straight straight, thanks or a flush or whatever. Yes, yes, thanks. Then. Um, the, the the value goes up that's stock holding it's a <laughs> yeah it sounds like a really cool concept yeah. i really want to try it as well it um, is um i've played so, it and it's uh, i really enjoyed it um stock so then we need to play it again sometime stock holding by a puzzle brand in the shop but sold out i think no oh, i think no? we still have really uh, what you what is up with you guys <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but a game which is sold out, but for which we will get in copies, very uh, new copies very soon. Uh, it's called Let's Make a Bus Route. Route or route? Yeah, I don't know. We we are uh, we Germans. Are, I'm yes, sorry. Yeah. Where is Ash when you need him? Uh, please tell us in the comment if it's route or route. I think I I, I Let asked us know. Uh, Ash before, and he's don't he's, don't. Let's let the people decide. Okay. <laughs> anyway, let's make a bus uh, uh, line. This is a game by Sashi and Sashi. Uh, and famous, Sashi. famous for um, <laughs> coffee roaster and uh, what some other games they made. When coffee lab mm -hmm. and let's then take the A chord. Take the A chord. That's the one I meant. That's also quite a nice one. This is one of the. Um, new kind of games called draw and write i think or draw and draw as i read on board game geek the other day um so it's a roll roll and write but with a deck of cards so you flip a card and depending on what's there you can um uh, you, you can write on the common board so not every player has its own but there's like kyoto in the middle, like a like board of Kyoto, and you're basically um, writing your ideal bus road, road <laughs> line on the uh, board and trying to um, get as many passengers mm -hmm. and uh, seeing uh, as many sights as possible um, on the trip. Yeah, there was quite some hype about uh, this game, I feel, after the game market. Many yeah. people uh, said that was one of the best games. So I'm also very interested in it's, trying this it's one. Very good. <laughs> it's very good. And it's very addict uh, addictive. Let's, uh, let's make a bus road by uh, Sashi and Sashi. Okay, let's see. What else do we have? This is a little thing I brought back from uh, UK Games Expo. Mm -hmm. um, it's a two-player um, dueling game. Uh, it's not nothing to do with Asia. Um, uh -huh. I'm afraid. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> it's why is it here? Why is it here? They just gave it to me, and, <laughs> <laughs> and we're holding it in the camera now. Yeah, we are making now promotion for Light Seekers, which is uh, by Play Fusion. Yeah, it's um, I mean, it's like magic, but <laughs> it's <laughs> but we got it for free. <laughs> I think. Mm. Yeah, it's it's 
It's nice. So you have uh, you're playing spells. Did you try it? Yeah. You play? oh. yeah. You're mm -hmm. playing spells and uh, units and so on. And the interesting mechanic going on here is that you um, uh, rotating your cards and depending on which side they are on, they are doing a different amount of damage or healing mm. you and so on. Uh, but apart from that, uh, this is like normal. Uh, obwohl, um, there's obwohl. <laughs> There's one more thing. So you're basically uh, you're drawing new cards at the end of the turn, which is also different from many other of those uh, dual games. So you first you play your cards and up to two cards, and then uh, for every card you did not play, you can draw a card. So if I don't play a card at all, I can draw two cards. And then based on randomly getting handed this game, do you think it, we will also buy this for a nice game shop or...? So, maybe, let, let, us maybe. Know, let us know if you want to have this on nice game shop. It's, I mean, they, they have no distribution yet in, in Germany. Um, so And we'll be getting um, games from America for a nice game shop soon anyway. Maybe not North America. But the other America. Yeah. The more sexy one, or I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was racist. For, uh, what? <laughs> really? No. I mean, for the games. I'm talking about <laughs> the games, obviously. Um, anyway. Yeah, this is this is Leipzig, because I don't know if we will have it on the shop. But the company was kind enough to give me this, and I, I enjoyed the game, so... Uh, yeah, let's check it out sometime, and if we like it, we'll tell you more. Right. Back to Asia! Back to Asia, with Madrick, um, mm. a two-player Cthulhu battle card game. But, uh, yeah, as, as I was said, Cthulhu and not generic fantasy. Um, so the artwork is really cool. Really cool. Um, but I have not played the game, so I cannot give you a very detailed explanation. But what I can tell you is you have this board in the middle and you're playing cards and on the board they are like... Uh, reminds me of Katai. <laughs> right. Yeah, it looks like a little bit finger on the... So anyway, colon. on the board uh, you have uh, yeah, some you have, spaces. You have, uh, yeah, and you have spaces and you have standees there. And with your cards you are moving the standees and you're trying to catch um, one um, one standee with your controlled um, so standee standees. Yeah. So that's oh yeah, I see. It's quite dark. It's quite dark. Yeah, as you can tell from the. Artwork here um, is it's beautiful, um, but the rules are only in in, in Japanese right now. Uh, but the publisher told me there will be a Kickstarter, so this is another game we won't have in in the shop. But there will be an English version available to buy through that Kickstarter, which should be coming up um, soon uh, this year. That's Madrick. Uh, by Sex. Sextile Salad. Yes. Uh, inside of the box is also nice. And let's move on. That's I don't it. think we quite managed to do that with the 30 minutes, by the way. Uh, no. but Maybe not. This is another game we don't have in the shop. Actually, a lot of games coming up now we don't have in the shop anymore, but... With your uh, input, maybe we will get this in the shop. Uh, just let us know if you want to see it in the shop um, or a video for it. That's uh, Psycholo Newtown by IOP um, Games, which is a dice drafting game. And um, basically what you're doing is... Uh, wow, lots of stuff. Lots of wooden components in this game. Really beautiful to look at. And yeah this wooden die and you're rolling them and in your turn you uh, um, take one dice from from the pool and then everybody does that and then with the dice you can this thing is huge you can um, build buildings and impress the king and getting victory points so everybody has some uh, wooden pieces you can build 
on the board and depending on how big and how high you build your buildings uh, you will get the victory points yeah that's basically uh cycolo newtown cycolo newtown iop by iop yeah let us know if you want this game yeah and let us also know about this game which is called guest club um by sky huang and kalima formosa formosana and uh, this is police is coming to get us let me just close the window so i don't hear the siren anymore this is a game okay let, let me try to explain uh, the last take i wasn't very successful so uh, this is a game uh, in which one player announces um, a topic for which all the players have to write words for it. So let's say I say countries of Europe. Then all players have six, um, six cards in front of them and with a dry erase marker they uh, write down six different countries of Europe. Each player writes each, down each six player. different... Okay. Each player. And okay. this is secretly. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And then the round start. Uh, so I do that as well if I announce it. And then in a round I have two actions. Mm -hmm. Either um, I can play a card um, and if another player has also the same words um, on it, then it is a right answer. Uh, uh, first, oh, it's a little bit like Stadtland Fluss, but uh, yes, the other way around. Yes, a little bit like like uh, this is, this uh, game traditional me? game or this this uh, public domain game. Um, but there's also another ac action uh, in which you are betting how many right answers there will be. And by right answers, I mean answers that not only one player has. Because if only one player has written down uh, Malta, for example, then it is not scored. Mm. So it, there has to be multiple uh, people. So it can be that... Um, for countries of Europe, only two right answers, for example, are, are there. And then so, you can. Uh, so the other action you can do is betting on how many right answers there will uh, there will be, I and you will get. It. Yeah, quite well. So you will get money for that, and at the end of the game, it, uh, whoever has the most money wins the game. Uh, I have a question which you might or might not be able to answer. Does this include an app or um, something like that? Because I see uh, this little sign on the side, maybe. So, um, there's no, oh, no app. I think you know what that yeah, means. I That's just, uh, yeah, just, just the, the QR code. Yes. So there's no app involved. There are, so, so it's, um, this is with English rules um, for... Chinese, there's also uh, some some cards uh, included for references, what kind of topics you could ask for, but you don't need that. So uh, it's not included in English in the box, but you can just come up with something which... Yeah, like whatever. Come, yeah, well, whatever. Exactly. Guess that's, club. That's guess and club. a really nice picture in front that I yeah. just noticed. Not available on the shop yet, but maybe soon. Tell us if you want it. So then, a game which is on the shop, um, it's uh, another call and art game called From Batavia um, by Kenichi Tanabe and Torio Hojo. Uh, Torio Hojo. Um, it's, um, it's a Euro style card game drafting game uh, in which you uh, give your discard to the player. So whatever you don't want to use, you give to your, uh, or what you discarded in your turn, you give to the player on your right. I have not, I have not played it, um, but yeah, that's 
from Batavia and I mean the, the designers are well known. Kenny Chitanabe, of course, the the owner of Colon Arc, uh, made a lot of different games and Hojo Torio, uh, who made for example Colony, uh, together with Busier games. So that's from, from Batavia. From Batavia. Mm -hmm. Very cool. I wanna try it as well. And let's end with something like, very nice. With something very nice. So this is uh, this I saw at the Moonlight Board Game Festival. It's fully Chinese, so I could not play it. And but the the interesting thing is this is published by um, a political party in Taiwan, and they try to um, raise an important issue through board, a board game media uh, or board game through a board game. So uh, beautifully. Beautiful. Illustrated or designed board game as well. I really like the style of that box. Yes, and the 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 topic is many old people don't get the care they deserve and they need. And in this cooperative game, we are trying um, to, to help old people. Yeah, to give the best care to old people. And I think this is a very important topic. And yeah, uh, the older I get, the more I think this topic deserves attention. Uh, yeah, and it's, uh, it's we will all be old people sometime. Think about that. Right. Prepare. <laughs> Prepare with this game. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, as I said, it's uh, it's not language independent. So and the rules are only in Chinese. So it will maybe take a time, uh, take some time until we can play the game, and we won't have it in the shop because actually mm. I did not buy the sport game because you are not allowed to buy stuff from political parties. Mm. I made a donation, and they gave me the sport game in return. So, but I think it's very cool, and I think it uh, looks like a great example of what you can do with board games as. Uh, media or as a, a, a way to send a message. So I'm really quite interested to see what they did. Oh. And it's uh, made in partnership with someone or? No. No. So then let's see what they did. Yeah. So I don't know the name, but this is a game by a party and we, yeah. we will call it Caring for Old People. Okay. And this this is the end of our uh, overview, where we showed you lots of games. And I think we're going to speed up maybe some of those explanations so you can get through uh, the whole video in your lunch break. And all of those many games um, are interesting. Many of them we will um, play uh, in other videos if we can find the time. And many of them are or will be available in nicegameshop.com. We hope you check it out. Bye. Bye.